Questions of the day. Ballot item number 59, order M132, second reading of Bill 132, an act to amend the Energy Consumer Protection Act 2010 to eliminate fixed rate electricity contracts between rail retailers and consumers. Ms. Campbell. The River Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. I move second reading of Bill 132, an act to amend the Energy Consumer Protection Act 2010 to eliminate fixed rate electricity contracts between retailers and consumers. Ms. Campbell has moved second reading of Bill 132, an act to amend the Energy Consumer Protection Act 2010 to eliminate fixed rate electricity contracts between retailers and consumers. First, you understand in order 98, the member has 12 minutes for a presentation, the member for Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. I'm very pleased to rise and begin the debate on my first private member's bill, uh, two years into, uh, two years after being elected, but still, uh, I'm happy it's here. Uh, bill 132, which is short titled the Energy Consumer Protection Amendment Act, Elimination of Fixed Rate Electricity Contracts 2013. And I wanted to start by providing a bit of an overview of how we came to have the problem with electricity retailers that we have today. During the period of market deregulation, which occurred in, uh, in the industry at the beginning of the previous decade under the PC government, electricity retailers were allowed to enter into the electricity system to offer customers the benefits of competition and choice. Although the formation of an open market was eventually abandoned, thank goodness, uh, and regulated electricity rates were retained, electricity retailers continue to do business in Ontario. Under the current system for residential customers, they are in effect outliers, and their continued presence affects the entire rate base. The electricity retailer concept, which was legislated in 5.1 of the Ontario Energy Board Act, provided that in a competitive market, retailers would be allowed to serve consumers by allowing them to pay higher electricity rates in exchange for the price stability and predictability of a fixed contract and what that provides. Retailers could also offer other services such as energy saving programs, energy audits, equipment maintenance, and or the option to provide a portion of the rate uh, to support renewable energy projects. After the province turned away from the open market concept, the OAB developed an electricity price plan that provided stable and predictable electricity pricing and ensured that the price that consumers pay for electricity better ref reflected the price of paid to generators. So the Ontario Energy Board's regulated price plan, RPP, has in effect diminished the need for electricity retailers in Ontario by addressing the consumer's desire for predictability in their energy rates. And um, despite the impact that RPP has had on the need, or more appropriately, the lack of need for electricity retailers, in recent years, legislation that has come from, from this government has focused more on retailer practices. The government's Energy Consumer Protection Act, which was passed in 2010 as a response to electricity retailers whose business practices were increasingly viewed by the public as questionable. And the new rules in the ECPA address some of the most common complaints that the OEB has received relating to retailers, um, specifically around the provision of customer uh, provision uh, to customers of comp copies of their contracts and reaffirmation calls, poor business practices, and the like. Retailer practices such as door-to-door -door sales and the provision of prevent pre potentially misleading information to customers accounts for 70 to 90 percent of complaint calls to the OEB. Customers who have been concerned about rising electricity prices may be signing these contracts with the belief that future higher prices can be avoided by contracting with a retailer, even though most of the projected price increases will be included in the global adjustment. And that, of course, is the amount that fluctuates from uh, month to month. Contracts with retailers are typically for the cost of power and may not protect people against increases in delivery, regulatory, global adjustment, or other non-energy charges. So really, people are, are being sold a, a false, uh, false bag of goods. As a result, the Energy Consumer Protection Act 2010, um, as a result of this, the Ontario Energy Board has expanded its regulatory oversight of electricity retailers but there have been costs that have been associated with this expansion of their regulatory duties. And this has had an impact on the entire rate base. And it, so what it's essentially doing is because we have some energy retailers who may not be um, operating in the best faith, 
Uh, that has caused the government to react in 2010 by increasing uh, some of the legislative oversight, which is adding more cost to the system, and so we are all paying that, whether we are with an energy retailer or not. So what this bill seeks to do is four things. To disallow further new private fixed rate contracts for residential customers. Any fixed rate contracts entered into after the specified date of when this act comes into force will be considered void. Phasing out, it will also phase out existing retailer contracts with residential customers by allowing them to expire and by um, not allowing them to be extended beyond um, the expiration date. It will allow private electricity retailing in circumstances where institutional, industrial and commercial customers decide that it is in their best financial interest. So again, this, uh, this piece of legislation only applies to residential uh, customers. It, it does not apply to um, any large non-residential customers who may be better suited to make the complex business decisions associated with long-term contracted electricity rates. And the fourth piece of this piece of legislation is consumer protection. It protects consumers when contracts are entered into after the date that this piece of legislation would take effect. And it would allow people the freedom from liability for obligations under their contract and also a right to a refund if those contracts were entered into after, um, after this uh, takes effect. And I wanted to spend a little bit of time about explaining why this is an important issue to me personally and also why it's an important issue to the people in Kenora Rainy River. A few years ago when I was working for the former MPP, I started to see a steady stream of people who were walking into all three constituency offices who were just fed up. Uh, they were beside themselves. They had received these bills in, in the mail, their hydro bills, and uh, their already unaffordable hydro bills were just that much more ridiculous and it was something that they couldn't keep up with. People were signing up for a variety of reasons. It could just be that they were, had just walked in their doors after a long day at work. They could be on the phone, uh, dealing with their kids, making dinner, all of these things. And then it also, I noticed that there was a spike in uh, 2010, right after the McGuinty government announced that they would be raising hydro prices by 46% over the next five years. And that had people terrified, especially in northwestern Ontario, where we rely on electricity and it is essentially um, a, an essential service for us. And the people who I saw coming through the door really varied. We had a lot of seniors, people on social assistance, people who were receiving ODSP, really people who were having a hard enough time keeping afloat and paying their, their bills as it is and uh, didn't really have the luxury of, of paying extra. Um, we had, uh, as I said, pensioners, and we also had some professionals. You know, I had um, some physicians who would come in and they came in pretty uh, sheepishly. Um, saying, you know, I really, I looked at everything, I thought that I was going to be getting a good deal, and even I couldn't, you know, even I couldn't tell after reading all of this fine print that I would be stuck with this enorm enormous bill afterwards. And uh, I wanted to highlight a couple of the examples of people who had come in. I had, uh, for instance, um, a single mother who was told that she had to sign on with a retailer or Hydro One would not supply her anymore a senior in a First Nation community who had no idea what she was signing. There was a woman who was legally blind who was forced to sign a contract. A couple living off of workers' compensation, um, a man uh, living in a First Nation community who was signed up by his mother who was just temporarily staying at his house, a lady living on $12,000 a year who was coerced into signing by a salesperson who scared her when he refused to leave, and a young father was made to believe that the salesperson was from a government agency and his job was to help consumers find the best energy deals. And then, of course, I've heard other examples, too, of uh, you know, single women being home alone and uh, having uh, three very large men coming to the house and uh, saying that they would give her a couple minutes to think about it while they idled outside, uh, which would cause, uh, give anybody cause for concern. So um, what happened was uh, I started having some, su some success cancelling these contracts. In some instances, I was able to get people a refund, but of course not in enough cases. And I also made a concerted effort to host information sessions around the riding and expose some of the tactics that are being used, like sending the checks in the mail that on the back is saying very fine print, by uh, cashing this check, you agree to enter into a five-year contract at such and such a rate, sending out prepaid MasterCards to people on social assistance right before Christmas. I mean, this is really deplorable stuff. Yes, very unethical. So um, 
I found that helping people after the contracts were signed was, was helpful, but um, the consumer awareness just wasn't enough. People were still signing up, and that was simply because we just can't reach everybody and let people know and uh, let them know about all the, the tactics. And so um, we're still hearing cases of, uh, of some of these retailers misrepresenting themselves. And so aside from these stories, there are also some other folks who, are, who have been talking about electricity retailers and how they aren't necessarily good for, for uh, Ontarians. And an example is, according to the Ontario Auditor General's 2011 report, it was estimated that approximately 15% of the province's customers are currently signed up with a retailer and are paying between 35 and 65% more than customers who are paying their hydro rates with their local distribution companies. And of course, they're not protected from price increases. And as mentioned, having electricity retailers as part of our energy system costs us all more. We've had to increase our resources to police the practices of some of these retailers. And the Electricity Distributors Association has said that phasing out multi-year fixed price contracts offered by private electricity retailers for residential customers will save the overall electricity system approximately $260 million annually based on a 50% premium compared to the, the uh, RPP, the Regulated Price Plan. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention uh, very briefly that uh, this government did make some changes in 2010 to quote unquote crack down on energy retailers, but um, those changes really haven't translated to uh, the protection that, uh, that people are looking for. I've got a list of the top 10 uh, supplier complaints from the Ontario Energy Board that they've received in the last quarter. And despite the changes that were set to deal with these exact things, we're still seeing problems with the general contract. Cancellation charges being too high or unfairly applied. Reaffirmation, um, people are declining on the reaffirmation call and still being signed up. Misrepresentation of identity. Cancellation requests not being processed. No copies of contracts given. Contract renewals, even after the time that they've been allowed uh, to be uh, renewed. Persistent sales tactics and uh, other problems with the verification. So um, there are a number of, of issues that are not being addressed with current legislation. And so that is why I believe that the only option that we have left is, is to simply uh, ban the sale of, of fixed rate electricity contracts to residential customers. The other thing that I should mention very briefly is I have, in all of the people I've talked to across Kenora Rainy River, I have not met a single person who has entered a contract knowing full well what that contract actually entails and what that's going to mean in terms of their hydro bill. Thank you.